The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. King Herod heard of the disciples preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah, and still others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who, had, who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and a holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptist. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. The opening words of the Gospel of Mark are the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as is written in the prophets. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. The messenger was John the Baptist. John prepared the way for Jesus by preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching much the same message, repent and believe in the good news. There are a lot of connections between John the Baptist, Jesus, and the various Herods of the Bible. Herod Antipas, which is our Herod of today, is not really a king. He and his brothers ruled at Rome's pleasure. It was Rome that divided their fathers, their father was Herod the Great, kingdom among the three brothers. Herod Antipas rules over Galilee and Perea. His brother Archie, Archelaus rules over Judea and Samaria, while a half-brother, Philip, rules over the Gentile territories on the far side of the Jordan River and northeast of Galilee. Now, whenever the name Herod comes up, it raises a red flag for all of us. Earlier, Herod the Great had tried to kill the baby Jesus in the slaughter of the innocents. Herod, Herod Archelaus threatened Joseph and his new family. Now Herod Antipas murders John the Baptist. The mention of Herod's name warns us of trouble ahead. Well, this is the story of John's death. It begins by mentioning both Herod and Jesus. The linkage of Herod, John, and Jesus is important to this text. And we have seen them linked from the beginning. 
Mary and Elizabeth both celebrated their pregnancies together, and Elizabeth told Mary of the role that Mary's son would play in the world. John prepared the way for Jesus. John baptized Jesus, and his baptism became an occasion for God to reveal that Jesus was his son. Now, both John and Jesus are linked to Herod, who will play a role in their deaths. Herod kills John for telling the truth, and in due time, we will see Herod involved in Jesus' death. Now, Herod has mixed feelings about John, uh, just as he will about Jesus. Both Herod and Pilate will have misgivings about authorizing Jesus' execution but both will be persuaded by a crowd of people. John's disciples came and took up his corpse and laid it in a tomb. Joseph of Arimathea will do the same for Jesus. Both John and Jesus continue to weld power after their deaths. The thought of John's death haunts Herod. And in fact, in the beginning of our reading today, Herod believes that Jesus is John resurrected. This, then, is more than a story about John. It's a story about Jesus, a glimpse into the death that he will die and the resurrection that will follow. John blazed the trail for Jesus, both in life and in death. But it is John's death we read about today. And in telling of it, we can see the foreshadowing of Jesus' own death. John the Baptist is arrested basically for political reasons. But in reality, John is not teaching politics. He's preaching Jewish law. He was preaching against the marriage of Herod and Herodias, and this upset Herod and his wife. Herodias had been married to Herod, Herod's half-brother, Philip. She divorced Philip and married Herod. Herod divorced his wife, the daughter of the king of a desert kingdom adjoining his own, to marry Herodias. Herodias was also the granddaughter of Herod the Great, and this made her a niece to both Philip and to Herod. As I've said before, we need a whiteboard to diagram out this family tree. Now, this was all fairly typical for the Roman upper classes of that time but it was deeply disturbing to religious Jews. And remember, Herod and Herodias were Jewish. John is preaching against this marriage. It is against Jewish law. And this is what gets him arrested. But Herod wouldn't execute John because Herod thought John was a righteous and a holy man. And Herod liked to listen to John, even though he greatly perplexed him. So Herod kept John in jail, but he also kept him safe from the wrath of Herodias. She was a powerful woman, and it was mostly her honor that John was attacking, but she could not kill John while her husband protected him. She finally gets an opportunity to get revenge on John at Herod's birthday, birthday party. Their daughter dances at the party and so pleased Herod that he made an oath to give her whatever she asked of him. Oaths were important in Jewish society, and there's a lot of wisdom literature in the Bible about being careful when you make an oath. Herod wasn't careful. Salome asks her mother what she should request, and Herodias gets her revenge. John the Baptist tells the truth, and this account tells about the consequences. So even while we affirm with Jesus that the truth will make you free, we must also recognize that it may get you arrested and killed. That's a paradox, of course, along the lines of no good deed goes unpunished. Yet this kind of paradox is at the heart of the gospel. Worldly wisdom always suggests that you be cautious, reasonable, look out for yourself, keep your opinions open, keep your options open. 
Avoid commitments that may get you stuck. Stay calm. John the baptizer, however, was uncompromising in speaking the word given to him. He had to have known that criticizing authority had consequences and could only turn out badly for him. And our affirmation of an allegiance to the truth of the gospel cannot be a hedge position. It's all or nothing, regardless of the consequences. Now, where exactly is the gospel here in this story about John's death? Where is the good news we were promised at the beginning of the chapter? It's right where it always has been, sitting squarely on Jesus' shoulders. He was a man of peace and justice. He defended those who had no power. He loved the forgotten, those who lived on the margins of society, the powerless. And this has always offended those who have power, political and economic, and who use that power to their own gain. Jesus preached the gospel of love for everyone, and that's a dangerous idea. It was dangerous for John, it was dangerous for Jesus, and it is still dangerous today. We are to love our neighbor as ourselves, and Jesus also tells us everyone is our neighbor. Everyone. Not just the people who live near us and look like us, and who think like us, but everyone. That is a dangerous idea in a divided world, but it is the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.